Hello and good evening, everyone. Welcome to our 38th Bluehead Virtual Seminar. Bluehead Virtual Seminar is a platform that allows health professionals to discuss current management updates of different health-related topics for better patient care. And this platform is brought to you by Bluehead Ethiopia, a medical consultancy company founded by medical doctors and a computer engineer. And we aim to be an influential healthcare leader in creating a skilled community through easily accessible knowledge in preventive medicine. And I'm your host, Adam Getacho. I'm the co-founder and CTO at Blood Ethiopia. And it's a huge pleasure for us to have Dr. Mulu Muleta here with us. And she's going to give us a talk and an update on the approach to pelvic organ prolapse. To give you a little background on Dr. Mulu, uh, she did her uh, medical doctor, doctorate degree at uh, Gondar University in uh, 1984. And uh, she specialized in gynecology and obstetrics. Uh, at Addis Ababa University in 1990, and also some specialty on urogynecology uh, from Juma University uh, on uh, at 2018, and she was also uh, the national representative of Women and Health Alliance from uh, 2010 to 2016, uh, where she was teaching and providing clinical care services at three universities: Gondar, Gondar, Juma, and Asala. And uh, she's currently practicing at the private MCH uh, center. Uh, Hello, good evening, everyone. Uh, today we'll talk about uh, pelvic organ prolapse. Uh, I will follow the following outline. We'll talk about uh, the definition, what it means, and uh, normal anatomy, which is significant only to this problem. And uh, we'll talk about uh, the causes, what happens, and uh, what contributes, um, signs, symptoms, and how we can approach uh, women with pelvic organ prolapse, and how we can type this, and what the stage. And finally, we'll talk about the management outlines or management plan. Uh, starting from the definition of pelvic organ prolapse, uh, it is the downward descent or it is a herniation of one or more of the pelvic organs from their normal anatomic position to the level or beyond the, the vaginal orifice or to the hymen. That's a landmark. So uh, it is sometimes referred as female genital prolapse or sometimes as user of vaginal prolapse. They talk about the same thing. The pelvic organ, uh, uh, the pelvic organs which can be uh, affected by this problem or the pelvic organs to prolapse include, uh, it could be the bladder of the uterus, it could be the vagina, the rectum, small bowel, or all of them or it could be some of this. It's very possible that one or two of these organs prolapse. Talking about the magnitude of pelvic organ prolapse, among women just appearing for any gynecological problem to the outpatient department, about 30 to 65% of these women can have certain degree of pelvic organ prolapse symptoms or or any degree, certain degree. It could be mild to, 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 the, to the worst uh, stage of uh, pelvic organ prolapse. About 29 to 5.7% of these cases might present with symptoms of pelvic organ prolapse. Among this, about 11% of this woman just appearing to... So let me show you the second page then. Uh, we talked about the definition, what it means. It is just a herniation of one of or more of the pelvic organs from their normal position to or beyond the vaginal orifice to the level of the hymen or beyond that. Pelvic organ prolapse, sometimes referred as female genital prolapse or user of vaginal prolapse. 
So the pelvic organs, which are included in the prolapse, genital uh, organ prolapse, are could be either the bladder, the uterus, the vagina, the rectum, small bowel, or two or three of this, or one or more. So the magnitude of pelvic organ prolapse is not rare incident, by the way, but uh, people are not talking much about it. It is uh, it's really a public health uh, problem. And among women just coming up here into the gynae OPD for gynecological examination, about 30 to 65 percent can have certain degree of pelvic organ prolapse. Among this, about 2.9 to 5.7 percent of the cases can have pelvic organ prolapse symptoms. About 11 percent of this might have lifetime chance to undergo surgery for either urinary incontinence or pelvic organ prolapse. So it's not rare. There is a systematic review done by Gaten Nath and his colleague at the Addis Ababa University. They did just systematic review of the journals and they came up with a prevalence of public organ prolapse of any stage of 23.52%. So you can see how big it is. Three structures support uh, pelvic organs, the pelvic floor muscles, basically the levator and muscles, pelvic floor connective tissue and ligaments, and the vagina wall. These structures make a network and act like a hammock to support the pelvic organ. It's not a rigid, rigid support, but these organs can move back and forth side to side, it's just like sitting on the hammock and still they are mobile, but the support is, is preventing the descent of these pelvic floor organs. This is just to show some of, uh, of the supporting structures, basically the ligaments, Pubovesical between the pubic bone and the bladder, pubourethral between the uh, pubic bone and urethra, supporting the, the supporting the the bladder. Basically, they, they support the bladder and the urethra, and the 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 levator and the muscles, the pubourectalis muscle and the pubourosegeous muscle here, and endopelvic fascia, especially. The pubo cervical uh, ligament uh, fascia is a very important here. Levator ani muscle, it is a broad thin muscle group situated on either side of the pelvis. Anteriorly, it is attached to the, the, the body of the pubis at the posterior aspect of the pubic bone. And posteriorly, it's attached to the ischial spines and to a thickened fascia of the operator uh, internus muscle. So it is a, a, as a broad, also T, and it is just uh, supporting on either side of, of these organs, especially the, 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 the urethra, the, 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 the bladder, the vagina, and, and the rectum. It provides support to the pelvic uh, visceral structures and play an important role in, ur in urinary voiding, in maturation, defecation, and sexual function. It's not just supporting these uh, structures, but also uh, is involved in all these uh, uh, anatomical functions. The three parts of the, the, the levatarani muscle, the pubo-rectalis, pubo and ileo muscles. When uh, the levatarani muscle contracts, it elevates the pelvic floor, compresses the vagina and urethra from the sides because it is it's just on the side wall and pushes back the rectum toward the pubic bone so that it is uh, supported at that central level. 
When there is increase in increased in intra-abdominal pressure from coughing, sneezing, laughing, or lifting certain uh, heavy elements, the the the, the, the contraction of the 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 uh, levator ani muscle is initiated, and this contraction compresses uh, uh, the against against these organs and. The vagina lies horizontal and narrows the genital hiatus, and that prolapse prevents the prolapse. The genital hiatus, it is uh, the, the gapping of uh, the, the gapping space uh, in the anterior, anteriorly, which is called the urogenital hiatus, so which the, 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 the urethra, the bladder, and the vagina uh, moves or inserts and the, the rectal hiatus posteriorly. So these are like uh, the genital hiatus, which narrows by the contraction of the levator ani muscles, uh, preventing the prolapse. This is how the, it, it works. The connective tissues, the fascias, the vaginal wall, and the ligaments also support the pelvic organs, and the these structures attach them to the muscles and the bony structures. Among the fascias, the arcus tendinis uh, fascia, uh, or the, what also called the white line at the side of the, the, the structures, is, is playing a major role in, 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 in controlling the, the descent of these organs. Uh, among the ligaments, there are several ligaments involved in the support of the uterus, in the support of other structures. Uterus sacral ligament is the, the, the strongest of all, and uh, these uh, structures contribute or agree with uh, the levator animals in supporting the, the descent of these uh, pelvic organ structures. Pelvic organ prolapse happens when the group of these muscles and tissues and the support structures are, uh, uh, are weakened and cannot hold the organs in place as, as it is required. Uh, especially uh, when the levator and any muscle lose their tone and during increased intra-abdominal pressure, the vagina drops. Uh, normally it is in the horizontal position it drops to the semi-vertical position, which this uh, uh, results in the opening of the widening of uh, the genital hiatus, allowing the herniation of the descent of these pelvic organs. So, also, not only weakness or stretching of these uh, structures, not only loosening of the structures, but the uh, the damage of the pudendal nerve, the denervation of these structures is also incriminated uh, as a cause, but uh, little evidence of the neuropathy is, is, uh, is proven in the pelvic organ prolapse cases. So researchers didn't support this anyway. This is just to show where important uh, fascias are located and the, and the defects of this fascia, especially on the, this is just uh, uh, taken as um, an example of the anterior uh, uh, vagina rule for the anterior uh, uh, defect or anterior prolapse, which is commonly referred as a cystocele. Cystocele or the anterior prolapse happens if this uh, uh, fascial defects is, is 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 a co is a is a problem, uh, especially the the central defect, the pubo cervical uh, fascia is holding the bladder or the anterior vagina firmly in place. If there is a defect on the anterior uh, fascia, the central the pubo cervical fascia, the the bulge of uh, the anterior vagina will happens. Uh, another is the uh, arcus antinus fascia, which is again very important, the lateral paravaginal defect. And uh, the proximal is the separation of the fascia from 
the, the cervical fascia ring. Uh, the, the separation from the pubic bone is also referred as the distal transverse defect. So these are actually the basic uh, fascial uh, defects occur when there is anterior prolapse, especially if there is a separation from the arcus tendinus, there is, we call it, the, there is also the lateral defect. So uh, it's, it's uh, the severest uh, degree of, 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 of defects on the anterior vaginal wall. The cause, uh, childbirth is actually taking the, the most blame. The major, the majority of the blame. Uh, it's not just the childbirth, but uh, pregnancy by itself. The distension, the the pressure during the process of 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 uh, pregnancy uh, can can affect the, 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 the supporting structure because. There is continuous pressure on the, the supporting structures during pregnancy, uh, but the vaginal birth is actually uh, affecting the elevator animus uh, uh, to the significant uh, degree. So uh, childbirth is taking the blame, and on top of that, like in Paris women, especially when they age, or when there are additional uh, chronic problems, there is a, said to be like, there is an adds on uh, effect, meaning Paris woman, she has already uh, some degree of uh, uh, damage from the pressure, from the distension of uh, the, the labor and the delivery. In addition, if she goes through like different risk factors, like if she has chronic cough, constipation, or job that requires heavy lifting, that increase any uh, problem increasing intra-abdominal pressure, that is an additional, an addition carryover effect in addition to the, the, the childbirth trauma. Having hysterectomy or other pelvic surgery is also another risk factor. Aging is another factor. Uh, when we age, the, the, the levator uh, any muscle mass significantly decreases. In menopause, the estrogen deficiency is another factor. So all these problems, if they are going or happening to, to a woman, it's adds on her previous uh, problem, which she has during pregnancy, childbirth, and so forth. Obesity is another uh, risk factor, and also other connective tissue disorders, congenital uh, uh, problems, genetic connective tissue disorders, such as Marfan syndrome and the like, are said to have uh, predisposing to, to, to having pelvic organ prolapse. Most women with pelvic organ prolapse are asymptomatic, but some can have like feeling of heaviness and pelvic pressure, dragging discomfort inside the vagina. Some feel like, like there is something coming down into the vagina or they feel even as if they are sitting on a small ball. This is the early symptoms. As the severity of, or the, the, the degree of the prolapse increases, they can feel it as a bulge or a lump. Even they can see it outside the vagina. This is in, in later stages. Dyspareunia is another problem. Actually, dyspareunia uh, cannot be caused by the, pro the prolapse per se, but it could be due to vaginal atrophy, muscular dysfunction, and sometimes excessive movement during sexual contact 
because it is lux from the prolapse is said to have some uh, degree of pain during sexual contact, but uh, just prolapse by itself is not uh, is is not the cause for this pareunia. Urinary retention is another possibility, uh, especially in the severe cases of prolapse, especially grade three, grade four, because the the, the urethra kinks and blocks the urine flow. So uh, incomplete emptying of the bladder is, is common in severe cases. Uh, sometimes well, if the, 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 the uterus is retroverted and the cervix is compressing over the, the urethrovesical angle, or if there is a big intracellular blocking the, the urethra at the angle or prominent rectocellular are uh, are safe to cause uh, urinary retention as well. Constipation uh, or rectal fullness, if the, 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 the feces is sitting in the porch of the rectal cell, uh, this is commonly, it is early, it could be early symptoms of uh, rectal prolapse. prolapse. Well, the signs and symptoms are just to coordinate the 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 sign symptoms with 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 uh, with the treatment. If the patient is symptomatic, if she's talking complaining of incontinence, maybe that has to be fixed. If she has uh, some other symptoms, one has to to also consider to treat that uh, symptoms. Otherwise, sign symptoms are not enough to diagnose uh, pelvic organ prolapse because uh, it has to be staged and uh, often the, 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 the treatment is based on the, the severity of the problem. And the type of treatment we offer them is also uh, variable based on the level of, uh, of this, the, the, the problem. So pelvic uh, examination is very necessary is, and I can say it is mandatory to, to, uh, to reach a definitive uh, diagnosis. So as a tip, uh, uh, when we are uh, preparing ourselves for uh, physical examination of a woman with pelvic organ prolapse, uh, we have to have, uh, well, of course, we have to have examination coach but we need to have seams speculum, preferably two seams speculum. Uh, we have to put patient in dorsal position. We have to inspect the vulva and vagina for any lesions, atrophy or excoriation. And we have to replace the prolapse and ask the woman to cough. This will give us idea in the absence of prolapse, if we correct the prolapse, what will happen? Especially if she has a stress incontinence, by just leaving the, the, the prolapse outside the vagina and asking her to cough, it doesn't show you, give you the, 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 the clear picture what happens after the repair. Once you have replaced the, the, the prolapse inside the vagina and put the organs in place and ask her to cough, and if she leaks, that will give you some idea of what happens after you have corrected say, the, the defect. So replace the, the, the prolapse and ask her to cough and observe if she is leaking for urine. Also put her on the left side and, and with one seems specular on the posterior, uh, uh, posterior aspect of the vagina posterior wall of the vagina, you can see the anterior, and by changing and uh, putting on the anterior uh, vagina wall, you can see, inspect the posterior, and by telling her to cough, and you can also see the level, how far it descends. But by doors, by putting in lithotomy position, you can do them all, but uh, that gives you better uh, alternative as well. Especially if, you suspect of uh, the, the, the bolt prolapse, 
you can put the two speculums on the anterior and the posterior vaginal wall and ask her to, to, to cough, and you can see how, how much, how far the vaginal wall is, is, is descending. So the POPQ system is, is uh, important, and that is the, the, the grading system globally used and accepted uh, nowadays. Um, International Continent Society actually uh, came up with this uh, POPQ method. It is preferable because it gives you a clear and unambiguous description of the prolapse. It facilitates better objective assessment, management and surgical comparison because Two surgeons can talk about the same thing because this gives you objective assessment. You can talk in, in centimeters, in numbers, in figures. So there is nothing uh, subjective. So in that case, you can also compare your surgical outcomes. You can compare uh, results and uh, you can talk about definitely what type of uh, repair is, is is effective for such and such stages of prolapse. So terms like uh, mild, uh, moderate, severe, cystocele, rectocele are no, no longer uh, acceptable these days. Uh, it has to be uh, objectively put in stage and in numbers. Uh, this uh, POPQ method is based on measurements that are taken using the introitus, the vaginal orifice, or the hymen as reference point. The measurements are taken uh, using a marked pap smear spatula. It's not expensive. You can use, uh, put some uh, uh, cent in centimeters you, have, you can mark on your uh, spatula and you can uh, use it as uh, a measurement uh, uh, stuff. There are six specific vaginal sites and total vaginal length is the seventh to be assessed. You can uh, measure the genital hiatus and uh, perineal body we'll discuss uh, shortly. This is uh, this represents the, the, this important um, uh, points which we have to measure and we have to uh, really assess during the pop queue. A, A, A stands, the small A stands for anterior. So these are points very important on the anterior vaginal wall. They give us an idea of the anterior vaginal wall problems or the anterior vaginal wall descent. Talking about cystocele, urethrocele, and to a certain degree, the vaginal descent. So capital A, small a, is a point which is at a distance of three centimeters above the vaginal introitus or the hymen. This is hymen or vaginal orifice is a reference point. So if you take your measurement, if you start your me measurement zero point at the introitus and measure upwards over the anterior vaginal wall, you reach at three centimeters from this introitus is A. B A is the point above A A until the anterior fornix, which is about three centimeters again. So these two points are talking about the anterior vaginal wall. BA is a point, it's the, the, 
the, the tip point of this is the like the on the anterior vaginal wall the descending part when it comes to the level of the introitus we can say it comes three centimeters down if it goes below the vaginal orifice we can measure how far it goes so it could be at minus three it is talking about <clears throat> The, the the tip of the anti the, the, the descending part on the anterior vaginal wall. So if there is no descent, this tip is at three centimeters. It comes out to the introiter, it is at zero. Beyond this, it is positive. Above this, above the introitus, it takes positive value. C is where the cervix is. D is the posterior vaginal wall or, or the, 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 the top of the, the posterior vaginal wall, the top point. It could be synonymous to the posterior uh, fornix. And C is the tip of the cervix. P goes for posterior. AP represents similar point of AA, which means three centimeters from the, from the vaginal orifice or the hymen on the posterior vaginal wall. BB is, is the tip of the descending part on the posterior vaginal wall. It goes from three centimeters to, to, the, 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 to, the, to the posterior fornix. Genital hiatus is from the midpoint of the urethra, from the urethra to the posterior hymen. That is the genital hiatus and Perineal body is from the posterior hymen to, to the mid, uh, to, 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 to the anus. Total vaginal fornix is from the hymen to, 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 to the maximum, is possibly the, to, to the posterior fornix. So except total vaginal lengths, most of these measurements are done while patient is cuffing or pushing or in valsalva maneuver. For the total vaginal length, to measure the total vaginal length, you have to replace back the, the, the prolapse and measure from the introitus, from, from the hymen to the maximum length which is uh, usually the posterior uh, fornix if the, the cervix is, or if the uterus is not out. If the uterus is out, the C and the D are the, at the same point. So, so this is talking about the same, uh, the same thing. A is anterior vaginal wall, three centimeters proximal to the hymen. So if it descends, inside is minus, outside is plus. So uh, we talk about it later on. This is just uh, actually summarizing what I have told you on the, on the figure. So I will skip it. <clears throat> so POPQ fundamentals. All measurements are made to the nearest 0.5 centimeters. All measurements are made relative to the hymen. Points proximal to the hymen are negative. 
points inside the body, inside the vagina, are negative. Points distal to the hymen are positive. The hymen is assigned as a value zero, genital hiatus, perineal body, and total uh, vagina lengths are measurements are given in positive value. All measurements except total vagina lengths are made while patient is bearing down or pushing down. Patient's position during the examination is lithotomy. It could be uh, sit versing chair or standing. And the stage of her bladder and rectum, whether it's full or empty, should be uh, documented. The staging of the grade of pelvic support is objectively done on the five stage system, which we'll discuss shortly. So this is again a repetition. I can say point A is a 0.3 centimeter distance from the introitus. Uh, what I want to tell you here is the distance this point descends on the vertical plane can be either minus three or minus two or minus one if it is above the introitus, depending on the measurement of your spatula in centimeters taking us like three centimeters from the hymen as point AA, and you can follow how much it descends and you can say it is at minus three, at minus two, or at minus one. If it is at the level of introitus, you can say it is at zero position. If it is outside of the introitus, depending on your, your measurement, you can say it is at plus one, plus two, or plus three below the introitus. So AA is between three and minus three. So BB, BA, uh, as I've said, it is, the, the, it is uh, at three centimeters. It is the most distant part of the, this, the prolapse. I've, I've said it is the tip of the prolapse when we just enter the vagina, where the prolapse starts is, is minor, is, is uh, it is BA, meaning when there is no prolapse. It can therefore be greater than plus three, described for patient point AA. So, uh, when it is outside the vagina, it's, uh, the length defines the most extensive prolapse. <coughs> Uh, we have talked about AP, it is, it's exactly the same as AA. The difference is this is a measurement on the posterior vaginal wall. B is the same as uh, A and uh, A, A, B, B, A, I mean, on the anterior vaginal wall. So point three describes the, the prolapse of the cervix or vaginal vault. If the cervix, for example, is seven centimeters above the introiter, this point is minus seven because measurement in the vagina takes minus as a minus sign. And if it goes like about four centimeters below the introiter, it takes plus sign and it is plus four. So, this applies for the other uh, measurements as well. Point D describes the descent of the posterior fornix. Again, similar to the cervix. Total vaginal length I have explained. Uh, the types of uh, uh, pelvic organ prolapse, uh, basically they are Four types, anterior, anterior wall prolapse, which is often referred as cystocele. Possible, she can have urethrocele as well. So something on the anterior vaginal wall. 
commonly we call it cystocellate, but we, you can also look for urethrocellate. Uterine prolapse, cervix is the leading point here. Volt prolapse in the absence of uterus when she had hysterectomy in the past. And posterior wall prolapse is referred as rectocele. Interocele is also mentioned when this small intestine is bulging through the vaginal wall, especially for uh, women who had have uh, hysterectomy in the past. So women can have uh, one or more of these prolapses. <clears throat> the stage, staging of pelvic organ prolapse is uh, taking into account uh, all those measurements from, from the pop cue. And finally, you can summarize like stage zero when there is no descent. Uh, for the staging purpose, we take actually the, the most severe uh, uh, prolapse among, if she has two, two or three uh, prolapses, organ prolapses, we can take the worst and uh, we make the staging based on that uh, uh, prolapse. So stage one is when the descent is uh, not, not one centimeter, but about above, uh, less than one centimeter from the introitus, we call it like stage one. Stage two, when it is between minus one and one centimeter, it's not yet one centimeter outside uh, the vagina. Stage two is outside the, 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 the vagina. Stage three is when it is when it is one centimeter, but not more than uh, or not even the vagina, total vaginal leg is minus two centimeters. Stage four is above that. So there are five stages. Stage zero is no prolapse, but practically uh, we can say there are four stages. So uh, coming to the management plan, when you are talking about the management of pelvic organ prolapse, you have to take into consideration patient's age, uh, comorbidities, severity of the symptoms, because the type of surgery, if surgery is the option, it depends on the severity of the, the, of the symptoms of the, the, of the stage. Risk factors for the recurrence. If the patient is having the, all the risk factors like chronic cough, obese or other uh, uh, risk factors, maybe you, even if she doesn't have like uh, the prolapse, like if she has anterior vaginal prolapse and the uterus in place and uh, you can also think of the risk factor and you can uh, take prophylaxis management based on the, uh, on the risk. So, uh, future sexual activity and fertility is also uh, a major concern. Very young and uh, uh, nearly paras women, maybe you have to tolerate uh, the problem and you have to wait or do some other uh, options rather than jumping into hysterectomy and the like until she completes her uh, fertility. So, uh, for asymptomatic uh, women, there is uh, nothing uh, to do because you can't make them any better. They don't have any symptoms, so you just leave them alone. For mild symptoms, especially and for lower uh, stages of the problem, uh, lifestyle changes such as uh, weight loss, avoiding heavy object lifting, preventing or treating constipation constipation, high fiber diet uh, intake, uh, actually it's said about uh, 25 uh, gram of high fiber diet per day is, is recommended, which is actually quite uh, an amount and uh, treating a chronic cough 
and the like can um, can stop the problem at the at the at that stage, or uh, it can at least minimize the, pro the the progress to the next stage. Pelvic floor exercise, hormone treatment, local estrogen application, and pessary are among the non-surgical treatments for grade two um, pelvic organ prolapse and and uh, and and below. Um, Pessary is a silicon ring. It can appear in, uh, it can, it's available in different uh, shape, but uh, ring is the commonest. Uh, with estrogen cream, uh, it can be, it is effective. Uh, estrogen cream keeps the vagina skin healthy and soft and uh, minimize erosion, especially when, if you are opting for pessary. Pessary we used to use, uh, Commonly in the past, but these days I don't see uh, people using it. Uh, but in Western uh, uh, countries, they are still using uh, pessary for, especially for bef before uh, jumping to surgery for quite some time, at least to to buy time or like preserving fertility and, and the like. Sometimes even uh, in uh, young women, like postpartum women with uh, prolapse symptoms, especially when they come to immediately after uh, delivery in the, in, uh, in the first few weeks, if they come with prolapse symptoms, uh, feeling bulge in the vagina and uh, discomfort. Um, pessary is said to be effective uh, because it is like lifting the weight out of the ligaments and uh, the fascia. And it is really, if you put the pessary and keep for some time, the, the healing will be facilitated at around that position and uh, uh, is said to be effective if they appear with with the sign symptoms of prolapse immediately postpartum. Surgery, if surgery is uh, decided uh, for vaginal uh, anterior vaginal wall, we often do anterior vaginal anterior uh, repair, anterior corporaphy. Uh, for hysterocele, we do hysterectomy. For uh, as well, if the stage is um, higher, we can also uh, do sacrospinal, uh, fix, sacro, sacrospinal ligament fixation and uh, posterior repair for uh, posterior prolapse. We treat the stress if there is stress. Uh, usually, uh, before correcting the the cystocele, uh, we don't know if they have, uh, if they can develop uh, uh, stress incontinence. Often with uh, advanced grade of cystocele, they, they have retention rather than uh, leakage. So by replacing, uh, replacing back the, the pro prolapse in, in place and by asking to cough if they are having stress, we can at least do some uh, stress operation uh, in addition to this uh, prolapse, but it's advisable usually to make it at the two states. Correct that the cystocele first, and if she has stress incontinence, you can apply TOT or do some other uh, stress incontinence treatment surgeries. Uh, Colpohysterectomy is uh, is samirue, we call it, and uh, it is uh, sort of colpoclasis. Uh, you can decide the level of vagina you want to leave behind, uh, but it is really effective, especially in older women, fragile from different chronic illnesses, and if they cannot uh, tolerate lengthy surgery or uh, aggressive surgeries like sacrocolpopexy, sacros spinal fixation and the like. 
So this table uh, summarizes uh, based on, uh, on fertility, desire of fertility, especially if they don't want baby, if she has completed her family and, and uh, having another baby is not an option. Uh, you can do like for stage two and no uh, below, there is no need for surgery. If sometimes there is a push from the, the woman's side, they, they can complain. And uh, if surgery is decided, just simple anterior corporate, posterior corporate, and vaginal hysterectomy might be, be, might be done. Hysterectomy is just to avoid the recurrence of, uh, or the, the descent of the, 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 the uterus in the future. If she is stage three or four, for stage three, or for uh, pelvic organ prolapse, vaginal hysterectomy is mandatory because uh, it will come uh, or <clears throat> it's already three, four, hysterectomy can be done, should be done, anterior corporate with corpus suspension. Corpus suspension treats the lateral defect. So stage three and four, often are having the lateral effect, the white line, the arcastendinous fascia is, is often damaged, so corpus suspension is, is necessary. Posterior corporaphy with sacrospinous fixation, if it is stage three or four, this is important. For all patients medically fragile or failures, corpus sterectomy or posterior, with posterior myography, and uh, you can preserve the length of vagina depending on, on the need. If the patient is interested to preserve her fertility, stage three, of course, there is no surgery. It can be postponed uh, until she has she completes her, her, her family. Stage three or four, we can do sacrospinal, sacrospinal ligament fixation, fixing the vaginal, posterior vaginal wall. You can prepare a tap. Richardson is, is, is different uh, technique of uh, sacrospinal fixation is practical in sacrospinal fixation. The difference is you can prepare tape and you have to scrap it because you bury the tape inside uh, so that there is no this mucinous cyst is formed from the vaginal uh, mucosa. So uh, you do Richardson. If there is cervical erosion, you cut the cervix. If there is cystocele, rectocele, you do anterior Corporaphy for ectocele, you do posterior corporaphy and they do sacrospinal fixation. In this, in such cases where the fertility is an issue, and if the patient is young and if you keep the sexuality intact, the concern, your concern is not anatomic result. This is just preserving this important issues you are concerned with, like fertility and sexuality. So it could be it could be better, but it might not be perfect with this uh, surgery because the concern is just to buy time until fertility is com is is completed and uh, just for the sake of sexual life. There are some risks of surgery. Of course, there is no procedure without risk. They can have pain. Well, the pain is often the first 24 hours, so anti-pain as any other surgeries, it can be managed. And bleeding could be an issue, but uh, unless in some uh, difficult surgeries, like in sacrospinal fixation sometimes, or in corpus suspensions, if you like, uh, fiddle. Deep inside, you can have bleeding, but it's not uh, 
often a problem infection as any other surgery and post-op condition. You might entertain uh, injury to the bladder or rectum and the like, but uh, it's not a big deal. But uh, important is that you recognize what you have done and do the correction immediately. You have to repair the bladder injury if you accidentally uh, injure the bladder or the same thing is true for the rectum. So recurrence could be another problem. Uh, Recurrence, uh, in recurrences, what you do is, uh, of course, you do uh, resurgery. You do the surgery again after some time. And what you do is, uh, like for both prolapse, you do sacrospinal fixation. If you have done like previously sacrospinal fixation and the failure is after sacrospinal fixation to the right, you will do it on the left, or you do like sacrocolpopexy. Sacrocolpopexy is often for uh, recurrence cases, and sacrospinal fixation is also for recurrence cases. You often do what you didn't do in the first surgery. Otherwise, uh, recurrence is, is, is a possibility. So, I hope you have uh, had some important uh, information. Uh, uh, maybe at the end, if you have some uh, questions, so we, can have, we can have discussions. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm uh, actually interested uh, in this topic because I'm a urogynecologist and uh, I'm, uh, I have been doing fistulas at Fistula Hospital. Maybe you know me earlier on. I have been doing a lot in fistulas. Again, uh, also I'm in a private uh, setup called ETLMCH at around Agagi. Kaliti near uh, Beijing Hospital. Uh, I'm still doing fistulas. Ut utero, uh, uh, UVPs and other incontinence for free. So uh, we can send any woman who is uh, having such problem. We are happy to, to treat them. As a fistula surgeon and a urogynecologist, my heart is close to this woman because uh, uh, UVP patients are no better than uh, fistula patients. Socially, they are actually e almost equally humiliated, minimized, diminished by the problem. And uh, so we want to fix them and uh, give their, their dignity back. So I'm happy to do that. If you send them, I will be very happy and grateful. Thank you for coming and sharing. Thank you so much, Doctor, for your time. And yeah, uh, maybe uh, if you guys, uh, I think Doctor Mulu have explained about ITEL MCH. So uh, if you guys have any further questions or how to contact uh, the, uh, the clinic, you guys can contact us or maybe we will post it on our webinar uh, telegram group. So if there is, if you guys have a few questions, maybe doctor, would you be willing to take a few questions from the question and answer to end only? Yeah, sure. Okay. So we are getting a lot of comments in the chat box. Uh, people are saying thank you. And just, I just want to mention that. <laughs> uh, the first question is uh, from Amanuel. Thank you, Amanuel. He said, how to differentiate rectocele from interocele? Well, uh, rectocele is just limited on the posterior vaginal wall. And it is 
often look situated in, in, in the lower aspects of the posterior vagina wall, and it has no connection at the top. So it is just low down, there is no connection higher up. Interocele is often following the, the wall prolapse or after uh, hysterectomy. So it is coming from, from higher up. So by pushing it back, you can reduce it and you can just feel empty vagina, empty porch. When she strains, when she cuffs, you can feel the intestine within the vagina, behind the vagina, within the vagina, with between two fingers, you can feel the intestine. You can palpate the intestine. The next point question is uh, Amane, can a patient die of prolapse if not treated? Well, patient cannot die just from the pelvic organ prolapse. It can be seen, it can uh, create a lot of inconvenience, uh, but maybe from complications. You see, kinking of of the urethra can, 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 might cause complete obliteration, complete uh, retention of the urine, backflow, infection, renal damage, all these long complications might kill her, but just prolapse per se will not kill a patient. Amane, does POPQ grading affect treatment outcome and the options? POPQ guides, it is guiding the stage of the prolapse and it's objective, help, helping us to objectively assess the, the, the prolapse. And based on the staging or the grading you have done, you can plan your, your treatment. It is affecting your plan but it's not affecting your treatment. If your plan is affected, maybe you can be, you can tr your treatment might be affected, but uh, it's, it doesn't affect much. But people can, can compare their treatment their, or the treatment outcome based on, on that POPQ stage. Like if I say she has POPQ grade three prolapse and somebody who has have had Grade three, we, we are based on the same type of objective assessment. So we are talking about the same grade. So if we like compare the surgery outcome of our, of our treatment, we can talk about comparing my surgery is this, my result outcome is this and this for this stage and for this uh, level of uh, prolapse. Otherwise, it doesn't actually affect our treatment outcome. It helps us to plan perfect and uh, proper uh, management for that level of uh, prolapse. Alemayo said, is there any means of effective prevention prior to its onset? Of course, we can prevent, uh, we can at least minimize uh, the progress of, of pelvic organ prolapse, or we can prevent if we can like treat uh, our chronic cough on time, our life habit is like, if we are eating properly, the roughage, uh, fiber diets often, because our eating, eating, eating habits, living habits, exercise habits, all these are very important to, to strengthen our muscles, pelvic floor exercise after delivery, after each delivery, uh, even there is pelvic floor, floor exercise recommended during pregnancy, all that can at least minimize the progress or we can uh, minimize the degree of prolapse we are intend to have. So we might not completely 
prevent it just by, by doing all these habits. We can still have it, but at least we can minimize it. Once it has started, we can minimize the progress or uh, we can, to some extent, we can also prevent. So uh, someone uh, said, how is the availability of PSRI in the usage in Ethiopia? This is what I wanted to comment. We don't have much of, uh, we don't have, I don't see a lot of uh, uh, PSRIs in the pharmacies or anywhere. I was actually looking for it. I couldn't find it. We often get it from uh, abroad, people visiting, visitors or uh, people we have contacts are giving us, but uh, I don't know. I'm sorry, I can't give you the source of uh, PESAR in this country. Even myself, I have a problem to, to access it. Amane asked if patient after surgery uh, what is the best treatment? Well, pelvic organ prolapse is not uh, different than any other uh, pelvic surgery. So, uh, as the uh, as any other uh, woman with pelvic uh, surgery, uh, we can treat with antibiotics. We have at hand. Uh, but uh, antibiotics uh, uh, helping uh, gram negatives and anaerobes are uh, preferable for for our cases. That's what we often use, especially if there is uh, uh, rectal rectal cellae or if something related. We we add uh, metronidazole for anaerobes, but we often give them gram and uh, antibiotics against gram-negative as a prophylaxis. So we don't have much infection. We don't do any even uh, pre-surgery preparation or nothing, but uh, it's not much different than any other. It's, 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 I can say it is like comparable to cesarean section delivery, cesarean, cesarean section procedure. It's not uh, something worse. Salalem said, uh, any association with living style because we encounter a lot of cases from South. Yeah, this is uh, something uh, people uh, say maybe the hard work uh, in rural areas, I mean, heavy load is, 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 is one of the risk factors. Uh, I don't know, people were talking about the, especially in Guragi area, we, we have a lot of women coming from that area. So if like the, the nutrition there is having some association, it has to be studied because people are talking about it uh, uh, strongly. So if there is some con connection with Kocho, uh, the nutrition value, I don't have any information about that, but for sure I can tell you that a lot of women are coming from that area. But uh, it is true that they are really uh, having uh, that risk factor of uh, hard work and uh, heavy load and, and the like. Differential diagnosis that may confuse with pelvic organ prolapse and how we differentiate. Yeah, uh, there are some differential diagnoses uh, we can uh, list here, like uh, delivered submibus myoma is a commonest, and uterine inversion after delivery is also. So uh, there are some or uh, vaginal mass or. Yes, speculum examination is uh, seems is specular examination. You can't miss it. You can see it. It's not uh, uh, something very difficult to differentiate. You can see. Yeah, it's, you, you can use just use specular examination. You can see it. For a mind.
perennial perennial body descent. Perennial body actually is, is, is coming down with 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 uh, with uh, with other organs, it's not a separate organ descent. So you can you can correct by doing posterior perineurophy, perineurophy if necessary, adding myography, you can you can manage that. And before exercise practically practically, how do you advise pelvic floor exercise if uh, in, in Western countries there are people trained just to do this. So if it is like properly taught, it is very effective. But the problem is we tell them to squeeze, but uh, sometimes what we do is to teach them properly and uh, checking if they are really squeezing, you put a glove and then you put a finger in the, in the anus and you ask her to squeeze. And if she's like squeezing and you feel the, the, the squeezing on your finger, you can tell her to do it that way. It, she has to be in dorsal position. She has to lie down. That's the best uh, position to, 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 to do the exercise. Uh, recommendations of vaginal hysterectomy and sacrospinal for compared with uh, without vaginal hysterectomy. Yes, some do vaginal, some are just uh, going for sacrospinal fixation and uh, they omit the, the vaginal hysterectomy, but recurrence is very high. So I often do vaginal hysterectomy with sacrospinal fixation, unless I'm concerned about the fertility. Which grades pesaris are used? Grade two and below. Grade two, often for grade two. Uh, what is the risk of recurrence after anterior corporaphy and posterior corporaphy? Anterior corporaphy, it all depends on where, uh, what the stage is and what uh, the fertility looks like, what the sexuality looks like. Like if there is grade three and above, unless you do a vaginal hysterectomy and until, unless you do the, the corpus suspension or sacrospinal fixation, the recurrence, I can tell you, is very high. Anterior corporate and posterior corporate is just better than nothing. Percentage of recurrence percentage of recurrence depends on what you have done. Uh, for If you just do anterior corporaphy, vaginal hysterectomy and posterior corporaphy or anterior corporaphy and vaginal hysterectomy without posterior corporaphy, the recurrence is high. But if you do corpus suspension and uh, sacrospinal fixation or sacrocorpopexy, the, the, the recurrence is minimal. How frequent is Kegel's exercise? Is a recommendation well for grade stage two uh, uh, prolapse? Kegel exercise is is helpful, uh, but especially if the prolapse is grade three and above, uh, well, surgery has to be done to get like proper. Uh, structure in place. That's so I think we have done uh, briefly all of them. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't know if I have answered uh, both. all of them. More than we, we expected. Thank you so much, doctor, for sacrificing you your time well. to be with us. Yeah, thank you so much. And we're getting oh. yeah, a thank lot of thanks. For Okay, so we're getting a lot of thanks on the chat box right now. So we would like to thank you on behalf of both Blue Health and our participants. Uh, and uh, hopefully, maybe we will see each other in another setup. Maybe. And, uh, and maybe if there is any way, we can do other companies.
in any way to help you with uh, IPL MCH. We'll be glad to do it. And I hope uh, this uh, is this comes from the participants also. So if you have any last regards or last remarks that you want to mention, maybe uh, like Bamarinyam Ulum so understand. እኛ <laughs> ብዙ ጊዜ ሰርጀሪ ሲባል እንት ይላሉ ይፈራሉ ግን ከተሰራ በኋላ ሁሉም በጣም ደስተኛ ሆኖ ነው የሚሄዱትና እኔ አንድ ጊዜ ያጋጠመኝ ልንገራቸው just በእንትን ካምፔን ወለጋ ሄድኩኝ ብዙ ኬዝ አለ ባክሽ ተብየ በአንድ ሳምንት ውስጥ 26 ኬዞች አየን አንድ አደም ይባል አንድ ሀኪም ነበር ከሱ ጋራ ማለት ይሰራል አንድ እናት 70 አመታቸው ነው ሬዲውስ የማይደረግ ትልቅ ፊስቱል እንትን ፕሮላፕስ ጉልበታቸው ጋር የሚደርስ እግራቸውን ገጥሞ መቆም የሚያቀጣቸው ሁኔታ ላይ ይያሉ ኦፕሬሽን ነው ማረጎት ማማስላቸው ቢያሉ ማልቀስ ነው የፈለኩት ልጃቸው ነው ይዟቸው የመጣውና እንዴት ደስተኛ ሊሆኑ እንደሚችሉ ወይስ በሰራላቸው ስላሰብኩን ልጃቸው በጣም ለማንኩት ባክን አሳምናቸው እና ደስራላቸው ደስ ነው የሚላቸው ከዛ በኋላ ብዬ ተለያየ ጻቸው ቢ በጽም ቢላ አይነካኝ ብሎ ሄዱ በማግስቱ ገን ይዟቸው ሲመጣ ለማንኩ ሰራንላቸው በሁለተኛው ቀን ሲሄዱ የተሰማቸው ደስታና እንዴት አቅፈውኝ ደስ ብሏቸው እንደሄዱ እስከ ምልኩ ላይ ደስታ የሚሰጠኝ እንዴት እንደ አይነቱ ነገር ነውና ብርዳቸው ደስ ይለኛል አንም ደስተኛ ነኝ እንደሱ አይነት ኬዞችን ብረዳና ያለኝን ማካፈለም ደስ ብሎኛል ሁላችሁን ማመሰግናቸዋለሁ ቴንክ ዩ ስለማደመጣችሁ እንትኑንም ፎረሙንም ላዘጋጃችሁ ሰዎች በጣም ማመሰግናቸዋለሁ ማለት ነው የምፈልገው እኛም እናመሰግናለን ዌልካም ሽፍን አዘጋጆቹንም ሁሉንም ድርጅቱንም በጣም አመሰግናቸዋለሁ ይሄንን ፕሮግራም መተማሩትንም ተባረኩ እናንተ ተናግረን